Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. So, for the other half of my um, Elucidian Star Striders kill team, I'll be painting up in full the Void Master. So, there's a reason why I divided this particular set into doing all of the, you know, uh, more diverse named characters first, and then all of the, um, I don't know, just generic sailor types next, is because I knew the sailor types, including the Void Master, would have a roughly similar sort of dress. And I will be painting the um, remaining uh, regular Voidsmen in a similar sort of um, colour scheme as the Void Master. But yeah, this is basically just doing the um, entire thing in a one, one run, just for the sake of uh, recording video. You also may notice that my voice is, I guess, mildly better. Um, this doesn't sound as crisp as my old microphone, but I did buy a new one, and it's, I don't know, I guess better than my headset, so honestly, it'll have to do. I paid a hundred bucks for it, so I do feel a little ripped off. Or maybe things are just, you know, money doesn't go as far as it used to these days, I guess. So to start with, I'll put some base coats down, and just like with the black leather on the um, Death Cold Assassin, I'm going to basically base it with a um, medium to darkish blue, and then I'm going to um, layer black over it, and leave some of the edges, that original blue color, to try and get a subtle uh, blue leather kind of look for the shoes. Uh, one thing that you might also notice is that with this miniature in particular, I start off doing a two-color sort of clothing scheme. I did his jacket a um, that greenish-blue color and his trousers that gray, but in the end I decided not to go for it because I just, while after getting the colors down, I decided I didn't like how it looked. So, ra so rather than proceed, I just um, changed on the fly. That is the one advantage for doing a test miniature kind of run like this, is you can experiment, and if you have to go back and redo parts or all of the miniature, it's not as bad as having to do it for an entire um, for an entire run. So you know, yeah, you do a test miniature, establish your um, your paint scheme, and then you do the uh, the actual serial production run. Now, I'm also one thing I'm going to try and do a bit more is. Especially since not quite 200, but almost there, people actually bother to subscribe to this thing. So I don't ever expect to make any money from it. But that being said, I feel I should try and lift my game in terms of my production values, which I intend to do. So I hope you like the new thumbnail and title card that I am yet to do yet, but I will in a moment once the actual um, audio is recorded. Anyway, um,. I might skip over a lot of this because base coating is just base coating and it's not that interesting. Like if you were to take the unedited footage, the majority of the paintwork is simply putting down like multiple thin layers of base coats, which honestly, it's not a very exciting video. Um, you can generally get the gist of it, and if you haven't at this point, well, I don't know what else I can do to help you. So let's, um, due to the, the you know, movie magic, skip forward to something a bit more interesting. So as I mentioned, redoing the pants, because after getting those initial base coats down and solid, I didn't, um, I guess I just intuited that I wouldn't like the um, final result. So that's the point where I made that decision. So yep, as usual, the it's still using my old, my Scale 75 paints, still, as far as I'm concerned, the Rolls Royce of all of the miniature paint, painting ranges. So the one downside, if you can call it that, is that they always, no matter the color, and especially with lighter colors, will require more uh, many thin coats to get that base coat down. Now I'm also going to do the um, uh, the base more or less separately. Um, well. I've already half done it now, and the method that I used for it is pretty much identical to the um, 
first Elucidian Star Striders um, Strider video where I painted Elucia Vein in full. Anyway, they, there you go. That's the point where I'm working on the shoes now. So I think the first pass I attempted to use glaze medium with my black and I just didn't like the how thin it was. So I went back and just uh, created a new mix without the glaze medium. And yeah, just basically kept on poking at the miniature until I liked the effect. Alright, so with these uh, miniatures and with I decided to do all the shading for all the cloth fully manually because I am a sadist. And I think the correct term though is sadomasochist. I enjoyed um, inflicting this pain upon myself. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a mixture of the base colour and progressively darker blues and um, working them into the um, deeper recesses of the jacket and on the shaded areas and these will be especially concentrated in the on the um, I don't know underside of his jacket and in between his legs to just try and build up that shade and then work on a gradient between the dark and the light you know all of the usual um, kind of deal with um, creating those shades and highlights except um, as usual, rather than just throwing down a single sh um, wash and calling it a shade, I'm doing it all uh, by hand. As always, it will take more time, but right now I am aiming for quality with this project. Now, I find that I can really do this because I don't really do armies anymore. This is just, you know, doing kill teams. You can, um, I've only got half a dozen miniatures at most, and you can really pull out the stops in terms of achieving the higher levels of quality due to the fact that you're not painting row upon row of identical miniatures. It's a, it certainly wouldn't drive you as, as insane. So you can see there I'm starting to reapply the mid-tone and blend blend the shades in between uh, to the highlights. Um, it's a fairly um, just you know you have to learn how to eyeball it, which is, when I was starting out, I found it an incredibly unhelpful thing to say, but genuinely, that's the only way to develop it, is to just keep get, getting that practice in. And also just look at people, I guess, like, this is probably bad advice, especially in, if you're doing it in public. Um, look at people and see how the light interacts with their clothing. Uh, see how the folds trap and reflect light, how they change the colors. Developing that eye will help you begin to pick out those um, shaded areas and where to highlight as well. So even with no highlights down, we can still see the results starting to appear. Um, and there I am, I think. I think I'm starting to add some highlights there. Hard to tell, genuinely, because like with the shades, I am trying to... Be no, I'm not. Yeah, so, okay, backing up a little bit. Like with the shades, I'm trying to do the highlights a little more subtly, so that'd be um, gradually building them up from the mid-tone to the highlight. Obviously a lot of my painting process is just sitting there admiring the handiwork and thinking about what I'm going to do next. I appreciate for some people that painting is a chore and um, you may, might not be um, as willing to look at what you're doing and just instead follow a rote procedure. Um, honestly I tend to use both methods for painting, both um, single miniatures in full detail and also 
uh, batch methods for getting good at laying down armies very quickly. I like to think of my, think that I have a range and that I can do both adequately well uh, when the time comes and when it's appropriate for either. One thing I do find with that sort of approach is that t learning individual techniques often helps. And just like with all things, each technique has its uh, advantages and disadvantages, its trade-offs um, compared to what you get for it. Um, like for example, the you know Games Workshop using sh all um, whole, whole model of shades of Agrax Earth Shade that can look it can do a decent job for what it does, but you won't get necessarily do well in painting comp competitions, and you won't get those very subtle transitions of color but for, mo for a lot of applications and mid to low range tabletop that's perfectly ex a perfectly acceptable tool um i think the, one of the better examples of this is painting up individually based 15 millimeter um basically i think that plastic soldier company like world war ii figures the intent was to create a sing essentially single based 15 mil figures for chain of command at that scale now that didn't have any shading and highlighting. All I did was get the base coat down, uh, seal the model in with some gloss varnish, uh, put down some um, like enamel wash, clean it up, mat it down, and then do your base. At that point, you have perfectly acceptable infantry for that scale. And nothing fancy, and it gets through a lot of miniatures relatively quickly, which, for doing a project like that, is essential to avoid, you know, to keep your sanity. Alright, and now that you've seen, I've gone on that tirade, you, I can now see the um, highlights I've been putting in. So, they're pretty subtle, and I wanted to keep them subtle because I didn't want the uniform to be to come off as particularly shiny. I just wanted to accentuate the folds, not give the impression that the material is shiny or anything like that. It's like, I imagine it's a big, like, wool um, uniform jacket. Um, so if you look at, like, pictures of people in similar garb, I highly recommend, like, British-style like style parade dress because that stuff is, like, obviously blatantly ridiculous and um, has that sort of look about it. You'll notice that it's not necessarily... Um, the, the uniform jackets don't um, tend to have a lot in terms of highlights. They're just very a very stark one colour, and they don't really tend to fold as well. Um, yeah, so that's it. Just continue, um, like just like with the shades, multiple passes over the highlights to build them up to eventually get that, um, you know, subtle transition, um, ideally. And you may notice that the vast majority of this model is in fact uniform jacket and trousers. So we've already, at this stage of the miniature, which is, hmm, how much? 13 minutes in, of, well, video time I guess, sped to 4 times speed, is uh, mostly done. So we already have a good impression for what our miniature is going to look like at the end. And obviously, just because the highlights are done here doesn't mean there's not more work to do elsewhere. You'll notice that occasionally I go back and do some minor touching up with um, a variety of things. Again, if you're very quick there, you noticed I made a mistake and just as quickly cleaned it up. It's very good to um, develop that um, muscle memory and know when you've made a mistake and to respond to it quickly before it dries into the miniature. So yep. Anyway, onto the shoes. So I don't think my first pass at the shoes worked out quite right. So there I am just redoing the um, what is essentially the highlight color, and we will um, paint over it to, with black to achieve that subtle um, a bluish leather tone. And there we go, that's uh, the black going down. So this will take a couple of passes to start building up that um, opacity, but otherwise you can see already 
once you can actually see the feet any moment now that the um, color is going down yeah like that um, while at the same time revealing a little bit of the blue around the edges just a hint of it to get the impression of some um, subtle highlighting with the leather Now, probably the least favorite minute feature of all of these miniatures in the entire kill team is the um, elaborate trim on the shirt, jackets, and whatever that show a variety of um, fantastical animals um, sewn into the um, design. Like, in on the box art, this was done with some quite handy non-metal metallic work, which I tried to do in some of the earlier iterations of these miniatures, but I don't think pulled off. So instead, I opted to go with a stark white, uh, just to contrast with whatever colour the um, uh, clothing happened to be. Though strictly speaking, this isn't a white, more of a, um, it's a cold blue-grey, which I think worked really well, well uh, with the um, main uniform jacket. So, like with all base coating, it's boring and kind of pointless to watch. All you need to know is that I'm doing it as carefully as I can in order to avoid getting it all over the work I'd previously established with the underlying uniform layer. So, let's skip to the um, parts where I'm, you know, doing things other than base coating. And I should mention, I'm also um, base coating the cloth tassel thing, or cloth scarf, cummerbund, I don't even know what it is. That is um, sticking out of his uniform there in a deliberately contrasting colour just to get some of that variety. So for this purpose, I chose just a red. Simple as that. Alright, and so now the base coat is sufficient for the yarn um, trim, I'm going to do the uh, shading. So for this I've got a mixture of black and glaze medium to, base, to make a homemade wash, and I'm going to very carefully um, just go over all of the uh, white trim with it. Now I'm using this mixture because, well, I find that the glaze mixture paint wash tends to be the most subtle of all of the washer type products I've ever used. Like, this is probably the one technique I constantly fall back on. Vallejo Glaze Medium takes a long time to dry, but makes a great wash. I find that basically the color goes on extremely subtly. It'll tint the area very, very lightly, and it will only collect in the area very lightly as well. So it's great for a very subtle layer of wash. It's not as aggressive as other products, especially Games Workshop. So yeah, as you can see, I'm just going over it a couple of times to um, just, you know, further accentuate it where I feel it needs it and just, you know, make sure that the shade is more or less uniform over the miniature. And while that's drying, uh, next largest piece of the model, which needs to get painted, is the leather belt kit carrying harness. So for that, I'm just using quite unimaginatively named brown leather from um, scale 75 from the exact same paint range as a matter of fact you know um, I think pretty much everything apart from the base itself was painted with scale 75 paints so that was kind of um, redundant of me to say all of that Obviously, since we're getting into smaller and smaller areas, they tend to dry a little quicker than the main uniform, so it's just a matter of um, noodle on one thing a little bit, get the paint down, get it drying, then go do, go, go do something else. It just um, keeps you busy at this stage of the paint job, so you're not 
you so you don't ever really find yourself at a loss for, for a thing to paint. Alright, now as for the leather, I'm also shading it with the same black mixture that I used for the um, uh, the uh, trim, mostly because it was there and it was a good enough shade colour, and as you can see it went on quickly and without issue. So what am I doing there? Okay, highlights, yes. So for this one, I wanted to give the impression of an old, like, beaten up piece of leather kit, so the edges would be fraying or it's been overused and the um, finish of the leather is sort of like wearing away. So for this, I just left it as the um, shaded brown, and I've got like an, a, an orange leather, and I'm just highlighting the edges. Because that really accentuates where the straps are and how they like wear away over time. And then for a second pass, I'll further go to the more extreme highlights on some of the sharper edges with um, a bit of white mixed into it, just to give the impression of like this area is particularly um, peeled back and frayed. So yep, as promised, putting in some additional sharper highlights just to further accentuate the wear and tear on the leather. So a common theme for these miniatures, they tend to have some sort of grenades on their uh, belt, which I'm not sure what they are. I'm guessing they're a gas grenade of some kind, so I'm just, I painted them a generic white colour and I shaded them with a, uh, a black just to, you know, get them done. I didn't think, think they're a particularly interesting feature on the miniature, so I didn't pay too much attention to them apart from the, you know, the essentials. Anyway, so for all of the weapons on specifically the crew, because they're obviously less ornate and more like standard issue, I'm just doing a basic black style case. Um, obviously, it's again base coating. Take a couple of passes, nothing exciting to look at. Um, the part here where I thought I'd do something different is the stock, I think. I ended up, um, well, I was planning to do it like a black polymer, but in the end I just decided to go for the wood because why not? It was there and I kind of felt like, um, it felt like the miniature needed it for some reason, I don't know why. It's just one of those impulsive decisions which, um, you know, tends to happen to me when I paint. And you know, just yeah, occasionally it's around this stage of the miniature where I tend to start finding all of the little details that I missed on the first pass. So in that instance, I just went back and painted up an, a leather strap, which I wanted to do the same color as the belt kit. Um, yeah, so again, just get, same as my usual chaotic method. I'm just jumping from item to item, getting them all done as I need to. Um, yeah, it's just. When you're in, it's when you get into a bit of a mood, I suppose it just tends to it tend to jump from bit thing to thing and it tends to flow, so you tend not to worry about it too much. It, however, the downside is it makes for an awful video because I'm just jumping all over the place, moving from one, one thing to the other. It's difficult to see what I'm doing, which I think is a pretty much a theme for all of my videos. Again, considering that a surprising amount of you subscribe to this, I will be trying to increase my production values. <sighs> I don't know if the video is necessarily good enough. I th just watching my progress here. I think you can mostly see what I'm doing, so I think my current setup is good enough, but honestly, I'm not sure. 
Mm, I'd say let me know in the comments, but I don't actually want to hear from it in the comments. Not really. Sorry if that upsets anyone. Just please consume my content quietly and please don't yell at me. There, there we go, as I said previously, just putting in some wood because, you know, just leaving the miniature sitting there for a second, you know, you're just staring at it at your desk and you realise, you know what, I think I would prefer it this way, which is honestly just a big theme for how I do a lot of painting these days, especially for one-offs off miniatures where um, I'm, you know, batching things out is not a concern. And again, um, for the red cloth, just like with the uniform jacket, I am doing all of the shading by hand because, you know, my just my big piece of advice for shading is that for shading larger flat areas, just do it by hand. For lots of nibbly bits, like, um, you know, chain mail is a great example. Um, it's A wash can be a bit more effective because that can hit things which you um, wouldn't really be able to do manually. And quite frankly, it's just too hard do it all by hand. That being said, I have done some subtle things in the past where I've um, sh used sort of a, a combination to shade chain mail, but that was a larger project and very long ago at this point. And as usual, for the lighter colours, multiple thin coats are avoidable. Just an observation on my part, it occurs to me that you really can watch the paint dry in these videos. Just watching the shotgun for the last five minutes, just subtly going from the um, slight sheen of paint drying to that very, very matte finish that Scale 75 paints are very good at. It's just, you know, kind of remarkable. Anyway, honestly, um, not much to say about highlighting the red, just I worked it all the way up to, you know, that's the thing with highlighting red, I pref you can either do it with oranges or whites. I generally prefer whites with fabric just to um, give it, you know, make it a little more, I don't know, faded in the wash look. You just can't overdo it because then it starts to look pink and that's not what you're aiming for, unless you are aiming for that. Anyway, um, so... It, the wooden st I always found found wood grain particularly hard to do, so this is me again attempting it. With these sorts of things, what I always tend to do is the moment I start is I just Google um, wood stock bolt action rifle and just have that image page open on Google and just use that to just get a feel for how the lines should go. Um, it's very difficult to sketch in that texture and it does take a bit of practice. Um, yeah, and it's a thing that I fully admit that I haven't quite gotten right ever, I think. Um, but I think in this miniature I'm actually quite happy with the attempt. Anyway, um, so yeah, as I mentioned previously, just shading those damn grenades, because they happen to be there. And 
and once the um, first round of uh, what they, I guess um, wood striations were down, I then put a glaze using uh, my glaze medium and a paint over it. I think some sort of brown to subtle to bl try and blend them in, uh, blend the lines in. But I think in the end I didn't fully like the um, effect that occurred with it. So I ended up sketching in a couple more lines over it anyway, and I found that that was the secret source which made this particular um, uh, wooden stock like pop in a way that I was happy with. And of course, because GW has to, I, in my opinion at least, overcomplicate their miniatures with lots of gribbly details, just you know, dealing with the last little bits on that like scarf cummerbund thing. I don't even know what it's called. You may also notice that I'm really holding off on doing the um, the elaborate design on the jacket because I I just f was not looking forward to painting it because it was a lot of careful detail work, a lot of fiddly work, and I don't know. I, I think at the time I was just having more fun doing other things around the miniature. Okay, so now that the weapon's down, um, I'm keeping the highlights pretty simple, simple. so I'm just basically uh, jumping straight to a fairly dark grey and going over all of the casing details. Then I'll further up the highlights to the very sharpest edges with an even lighter grey and that's pretty much the weapon casings done. I tried not to do um, any um, deliberate metal fittings apart from the um, most obvious ones and you can tell which ones are going to be pure bare metal and which ones are just going to be casing by just looking at where I put my full like base coats and where I didn't bother to put the highlights as well. So it should be pretty obvious, you know, just the, the actual barrels of the shotgun, the magazine and like that weird rod thing on the last pistol. And so on. You'll also notice I'm still putting off to the design because I would rather do everything else than finish off that particular part of the miniature. Even the flesh. I'd rather paint all of the skin first before I do that detailing on the jacket. And I really don't want to do it, clearly. Like, it'll get done, but maybe it will be the very last thing. I don't even remember at what stage I came back and begrudgingly did the um, that detailing. But yeah, um, pretty much a more or less simple and standard um, method for the flesh. Just aiming for a basic Caucasian, nothing fancy.
So I'm certainly doing lots of layers with that flesh. Um, don't have much to say other than that's what I'm doing. Um, as usual, like, it's lighter colours, especially with this paint range, take many, many, many passes to get even. Even enough to be uh, worthwhile at any rate. Well, hey, I'm doing it at last. So I guess I finally hit the point where everything else was starting to look real good and the trim on the jacket was still looking half done. So I finally bit the bullet and did it. Now, as you can see, I'm just trying to be very careful and just hit the upper edges. It takes time, it's annoying, it's kind of a little bit stressful to be honest, but it has to be done. And of course, um, just also doing a wash with some, I think it's Indian flesh or something like that. Just a nice ready color for um, the very pink skin. I think it worked, that sort of thing works real well. It's a bit like my old go-to from the game color range of using terracotta as a terracotta or tan, I think, or a mix of the two as a, f a flesh wash. Alright, so for the um, trim, I'm doing the highlights just with almost pure white, being extremely careful, as careful as I can to avoid hitting the um, jacket underneath. This is pretty much why I held off on it for so long. I was not looking forward to the um, extremely fine pass that would be required to pull off the highlights, and even then they're uh, extremely subtle. Yeah, and, those, and that detail on the back, that annoying little detail to highlight all of that. Hmm. Oh well, um, it's pretty much done. Home stretch. Yippee. Um, and we're on to the more fun things like the flesh. And j at this point, we're really watching the miniature just come together. Every color getting its, um, getting hit. And just, you know, the miniature starting to look like what it should look like in the um, final tabletop reveal. This is the part which kind of um, increases the motivation, not um, disrupts it. Not, yeah, that doesn't sound quite right, but I'll just go with it because I cannot be bothered to redo that take. Obviously those grenades do need a slight pass, but they're only getting a slight pass. Since a lot of the um, details and fittings are metal anyway, um, it won't matter too much about highlights. So, the flesh. Um, 
returning to it, so just re-establishing the base coat of pink, and you can see it's already contrasting pretty well with the, um, the wash layer that went down. And I'm also lightening up the flesh some more with like I think a layer of light flesh I'm gonna work my way up to pale flesh to get a um, quite a dramatic gradient in terms of the skin tones I probably say this um, most of the, like at least once every video, but the brush I'm using now is a Winsor & Newton size 2, I believe. And even with how, how large it is, you can see how it's really holding a point. So um, yeah, for the fine detail work, actually it could be a size 1, but either way, I'd recommend, even for a beginner painter, just be keep a size 1 and a size 2 on hand but don't use them for anything other than highlighting or the finest of details where you need that point. For the most part, other brushes will do for a lot of the base coating work. Like, it's my usual MO now, is I have the, um, uh, the fine detail brushes on standby for fine detail work, and to increase the life, the, the life of them, I only use them for fine detail work, whereas for everything else, such as base coating, washes and the like, I use uh, slightly cheaper brushes, or in my case, slightly older brushes. Um, yeah, really, I am someone who has too much money for my own good, so I can just... For a while I was just using Winsor & Newtons for army painting. You shouldn't do that. Stick, find something cheaper, because every bit time you use the brush, it just increases the wear and tear. So yep, usual procedure for doing the face, well, I guess I call it a procedure, but you just should noodle at it until you like what you see. Um, focus on the brow ridges, the um, cheeks, upper cheeks, the laugh lines, the chin, and the uh, sort of the curvature of the skull going up to the ear. Accentuate those details and it'll really start to look like a human being. Um, you also, but if it starts to get a little too highlighted, um, put some shading on the lower cheeks and lower face, just to, you know, gradually work in that um, variation of tone in the skin. Well, you'll notice at this point my brush is barely touching the miniature. I'm just getting those final highlights down and just getting the details accentuated to the best of my ability. It's a lot of fine detail work at this stage that really doesn't call for a lot of um, a lot of paint. Hmm. Because so I think I went. I definitely recall going back and adding a bit more darkness to the face, just because I thought the um, uh, the. It was a bit too highlighted, high lit, I suppose. Over overdid the highlighting, perhaps, and um, not dark enough. But we'll see if I did that, or if it's just a trick of the camera light at this point. Oh, wait, yeah. Here you can see me just doing the eyes, and I'm trying to be extremely careful. And due to the nature of the fine detail work, you really can't see what I'm doing. Which honestly, I apologize for. But again, this is one of the situations where uh, keeping a Windsor and Newton in your um maybe in a glass case, you know, break in case you need to do eyes, um, is a good idea. Um, it actually retains that point and the 
if you, as long as you get your paint mixture right, you can sort of like sketch in that line across the eyeball to put that line in without also flooding the eye socket. It's very, very um, fine work, quite frankly, and it's difficult to do, and it does take practice. Honestly, don't begrudge anybody who paints only at a mid to a low standard to um, skip eyes entirely. It's hard work, and if it doesn't look good, it won't look good and it'll be obvious. Uh, but for the most part, you know, if you're doing tabletop standard, it's okay, don't bother with the eyes. Again, it also takes a bit of practice, but eyes are a thing you can go back and redo. So if you remember what your um, base um, skit flesh color is, or even go a little darker, you can just um, make a mistake, um, take you take the L, as the they say on the internet these days, and just redo the eye socket with your darkest uh, flesh shade color, and then just wait for it all to dry, start again. That's a, another advantage of having the smaller Windsor and Newtons for that sort of work, is that it makes those sorts of um, those moves possible, whereas it'll be a lot harder with a far inferior brush. I'm basically um, selling you on animal cruelty apparently and um, just the Windsor Newton Company, but I'm not exaggerating when I say these brushes are probably the have the finest control on the market. Definitely are the best, but they are the expensive, so yeah. Definitely not something um, in the reach of everybody, especially given the economy these days. Okay, I think the face is mostly done, and now for the hair. So I'm just going for a basic black. Um, so yeah, obviously this is the part which I kind of found a little harrowing because the hair is kind of subtle on the miniature. So I am just going to go very slowly and very carefully and make use of the reference photo on the back of the box in order to ensure that I don't mess up my work. So voila, the hair. But that's only a single shade. We, and a thing with this particular miniature is that you may or may not have noticed that the there is not a lot of texture on the hair. So we're going to have to do a lot of the work ourselves in order to get that, um, you know, hair painted. And like all painting all hair, you don't highlight it the same way as you do regular colors. Look at pictures of people, or look at people in real life, if you can get away with it and not be considered a creep. Um, you know, you've got um, your, the roots and tips are the places where the highlighting is. The color tends to build up where the hair is the thickest. So yeah, what I generally do though, is also do it a little in a bit of a painterly style, is like I use, sort of as a midpoint, sketch in the lines for the hair, like the shape of the hair, how it's Old, how the strands are going and then ve very much accentuate the color at the oh sorry the highlights at the tips and the roots like usual it's honestly it's quite difficult not as prescriptive as regular highlighting which is it does make it difficult and kind of subtle to do um yeah, it's also black hair which is some of the hair which i have the hardest time doing what am i even doing there sorry it's been a while um Oh, five o'clock shadow, yes. So I, what I tried to do here is put on some five o'clock shadow, but I realized I'd overdone it, so I washed most of it away. 
but I think this is the part, yeah, this is the part where I ended up um, accidentally creating a real subtle effect. Yeah, so definitely a good piece of advice is once you've done your flesh, if you've got like a male character or even potentially other genders, I guess, um, with, um, you know, and you want to get more variation and tone, just lay down a very subtle wash, like say, if you do, don't want to do a five o'clock shadow with black, you can do like rosy cheeks with like a red or a pink, a rosy red kind of color on the cheeks. It's, it goes, sorry, people are just talking on Discord and it must be disturbing you. I apologize. Anyways, but yeah, that can create a bit of tonal variation, which makes the flesh look a little more realistic and not just a single piece. It's something that I personally need to really get better at doing, I think, as I am um, not great with faces at the best of times. I definitely need more practice. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forget what I was doing there. I suspect it's just trying to paint the um, the tubes on his cybernetic implant some kind of black. It's genuinely difficult to see. I got up my scrubbing brush for a second, so I must have messed something up. So yeah, ah, yep, there we go. So as you can see, like when you're trying to do stuff close to some already completed work, it can get a bit harrowing, which is um just an occupational hazard for these sorts of miniatures. Another reason why um, uh, like Windsor and Newtons can be handy because it gives you a bit more finer control and can prevent some um, slippage if you're very careful. Another thing I definitely recommend is as many points of contact to something solid as you can get. Like, It's difficult to see but I'm actually bracing my forearms on, the, on my desk, on the edge of my desk, and if I was being really careful I'd sort of brace my two hands together and you can also see there's many points where I'm like one hand is sort of like touching the miniature at some point to try and steady it then in being very careful with the brushwork um, with the remaining fingers like I kind of have a habit of touching the miniature all over it's not great I should probably be wearing gloves but just in order to get the stability it's what I need to do and generally I find the effect isn't it doesn't have too much of a detrimental effect on the end, end result obviously there's also you know really getting into the final details here there's assorted doodads and bits and pieces all over the uniform like there's a couple of um, medals so I'm just painting the ribbons and while I was nattering away previously I just quickly did the shotgun shells in his uh, belt kit so you know just it's getting towards that final pass where you're just running around the model and hitting all of the things which you um, didn't do previously or are too small to be, you know, almost noticeable, especially in the early stages. Obviously, the more colors you use, the more highlights you need, so just chucking on some quick, simple highlights. Like, I think the, for the belt and ribbons, all I did was base coat, uh, a, a glaze medium sh uh, shade with black, and then just painted some highlights on extremely simple I didn't feel like doing much more pretty much same with the shotgun shells all right and finally the metals now this is the part I very deliberately wait and make the metals the last thing I paint in the miniature because just to try and avoid mixing my rinse water with good brushes and you know contaminating other colors with metallic flakes so what I'll usually uh, sorry about that so what I'll usually do is just um, yep, do everything else, and I mean everything else, and then do a metals pass at the end of the miniature. And that's pretty much what is happening now. So, my new, it's basically my newly adopted method, but for everything that's going to be a metal, even the golds, I'm just painting it a reasonably dark metal. I think this color is, um, the metal color scale 75 metals, and this one specifically is black metal. It's a uh, not quite gun metal. I still still think it's um, too light for gun metal, and quite frankly, most most paints which advertise themselves for gun metal are not dark enough to be gun metal. But that's just a uh, particular bee in my bonnet, which um, you should pay no mind. Anyway. So, 
This will take two passes over all the metal, so to save on, quite frankly, it's another boring round of base coating, let's skip over it with the aid of movie magic. Alright, so now that the um, metals are in place, we're going to start putting on the gold. So, simple matter of um, painting over, over the black metal with, I believe this is Dwarven Gold, which is sort of the shade layer of gold for this miniature. And again, this is kind of boring base coating, so let's mostly skip. Okay, so to be perfectly honest with you, I kind of forget the color I use to shade the gold. I think it's some sort of like deep red or a mix of uh, red brownish and um, red red I think. But either way, that sort that sort, sort it basically works for to get sort of like a weathered gold sort of look, which I kind of like. Um, yeah, not much more to say about it. Just you know, go over all of the details. And another thing that I completely blanked on is. I think I forgot to do any significant work to the... Uh, nope, nope, I'm telling lies. I did in fact use black just to... Um, just black paint to do some shading over the black metal. Um, it's very simple, I don't even think I used glaze medium. Just, you know, painted it on until I felt I had sufficiently shaded the black metal over the miniature. Alright, shades are down and dry, so I'm just re-establishing the gold colour with the, or I think the original gold, and just leaving the um, deepest recesses the uh, shaded colour. So, I guess for these sorts of metals, I really want the luster of gold and um, to show through. So that's why I'm willing to do that. Um, if I wanted to do something dirtier, I probably wouldn't even bother to reshade it. I'd just leave it um, a little messy to make it look like, you know, tarnished and weathered. Anyway, um, so I'm just putting down some simple highlights with the um, with a slightly lighter gold color, a uh, metal color, for the normal metallics. I think it's just heavy metal or something from again, from the scale 75 met, uh, metal color range. But that's um, simple enough. Okay, I think what I neglected to do with this particular figure, which I did on the other Voidsman, was the um, I, I did another layer of highlighting on the metal, uh, on the gold, with some s bright silver for extreme edge highlights, and I probably should have done some more highlighting on the metal, but either way, um, here's the finished result. So as you can see, I went ahead and did the base on my own time and off camera because I, you know, obviously demonstrated it with the first uh, miniature, and yeah, this is pretty much it. So overall, I'm real happy with how this turned out. Like the patience I had to take on the um, the trim work on a jacket, like really did pay off, and that you can really see it up close in good lighting. I definitely am really proud of the effect. Um, yeah, not, not much to say other than uh, continuing to praise myself, I guess. Yeah, I'm just happy with it. Anyway, what I might do is, as I am talking, I will start put up a slideshow of all of the other miniatures in the range just so you have an idea of um, what the rest of them look like. So that would be the first pass I did. You'll notice that Luce Lucia, however you pronounce her name, and her officers are basically all in shot and that's you know, individual characters and I wanted to you know, just do them first because I knew I wanted to do the um, troopers as a more of a unit so um, not much to say about the assassin but I for the leather I did basically do the try to do the subtle blue leather effect more widespread over the entire miniature to the best of my ability um, I've got to say I think this guy is my least favorite mostly because I've just found him a bit weird and lots of metal kind of always happy painting those glowing blue console glowing green consoles though um, and I don't really like the Admech aesthetic too much um, I kind of like this one, weirdly enough, the medic kind of thing. Just trying to work that, like, 
blue shaded hospital robe was a lot of fun um, and coming up with a red as the contrast for it I just think it looks pretty good um, and the dog well not much to talk about the dog but I'm not great with animals especially painting their fur but I think this one in particular turned out pretty well I should say the canid canid not the dog as it says on the box but he's a cute little fellow anyway as for Lucidia I'm happy with her like real happy um, I'm particularly happy with how the feathers turned out, to be honest. Like, I definitely turned out happy with that. Anyway, those are the troopers that I mentioned. So as you can see, they've got more or less a similar coloured uniform, but except more of a utilitarian cut, and um, a bit more in terms of, like, the gold armour, and um, so forth. Yeah, um, so overall, I think I pretty much captured the, um, you know, unique style of the kit and uh, put my own spin on it, which I'm happy with. And as usual, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how um, GW is now releasing these little kill teams periodically. It means that I can buy the ones that I like and not have to, like when they release a new faction, worry about having to, uh, do I want to buy this like unit of 10 guys just for painting and then just have them sitting there, they are not really doing anything, or can I just, um, you know, just, uh, basically you have them and not expect to use them in a game which honestly considering how little I play at this point may as well but yeah definitely looking forward to seeing more of the kill team ranges that come out I'm definitely picking up the arbites once they hit the shelves and I really want to see a um, Votan League's kill team because I want to do some space dwarfs but I want a varied set of miniatures without having to buy a couple of different box sets so that's um yeah pretty much my big um wish list for GW at this stage. I doubt I'll do any more large armies unfortunately, I just don't have the patience or the time or the cabinet space left for it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you got something out of it. I think I might also try at some point to do some videos uh, do, showcasing some techniques for more speed and army painting rather than... Um, I like to think, while I'm not a particularly like, I'm never going to be a golden demon painter, I definitely can do high quality and I can, definitely can do army, so I want to maintain a balance of doing both to make to keep my um, I know tutorials and stuff like that accessible for all levels of um, on the you know of miniature painting and also for you know different intents in terms of whether you want to batch through an army or just give a miniature your all. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for me for this video. It's already gone on over an hour at this point, so uh, if you've made it this far. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm never gonna beg for money, but I'm gonna st I'm gonna post my other hobby channels that you can use to follow me on a more of a uh, regular basis, if that is of interest to you. And quite frankly, I wouldn't blame you if it isn't. Um, so yeah, I have an Instagram. That's the best one. That's the easiest to use, and that gets you know the first pick. Tumblr's second, and I have a hard time using it because of a, what I think is a um, deliberate interoperability between um, Instagram and Tumblr. And I also have a blog, the YouTube channel, which you're obviously watching this on. I'll link all of it and you can follow as little or as much of it as you please. Don't let me tell you how to live your life. Um, anyway, once again, uh, thanks very much for if you made it this far and I will see you later. Bye bye.